oil, oil and gas companies set the price of oil, right? The price of gasoline is a whole lot of factors, and the, the big winners in the price of gasoline are the producing nations now. The companies are probably second, uh, the, the filling station owners third. That, that allegation most frequently comes up when the price of oil is, say, 150, and then say, well, gee, if they could have charged 150 in 2008, why did they charge $22 in 2003? Um, in, no, you know, essentially the price of oil in natural gas is driven largely by market forces. Um, um, yeah, the, the one entity that has some pricing power is OPEC, but even their pricing power is limited. And certainly at the in level of individual oil companies, you know, they're as much hostage to the marketplace forces as are you and I. Is the price of natural gas always going to rise and fall with oil? First of all, historically, there's been some correlation between the price of oil and natural gas, but the correlation really hasn't been that high because they can't be sort of, you know, you can't just, most people just can't switch from, say, using gasoline to using natural gas. And so that limits the correlation, but they have tended to move together historically. But basically, particularly in the U.S., in the past five years, those prices have become completely disconnected. And so the price of natural gas has gone down, the price of oil has gone up and continued to remain high. Um, and you know, that's actually a, a source of a lot of tension around the world right now because a lot of contracts for natural gas are tied to oil. Um, but now the buyers are saying, hey, wait, why should I pay natural gas based on a price of oil that's up here when I can get it on the spot market for down here? And so that's another way that um, uh, the shale gas revolution is, is changing the way that people buy gas and they're no longer going to want to pay a price pegged to oil. Can natural gas be part of our clean energy future? Can renewables and natural gas play well together? And if so, how? Uh, renewables and natural gas work really well together because we can't count on renewables absolutely all the time. Renewables are a great source, long term, not hundreds of years of reserves, but millions of years of reserves. So we know they're going to be there for a really, really long time. But you can't count on them every minute of every day. So you need other sources of energy that are there at the push of a button and natural gas fired power plants can be there whenever you need them. And they can fire up very quickly and they can fill in when the renewables aren't there. So I don't think we can get all fossil fuels in a day. Um, I mean, obviously so much is dependent on it, but I think that we could get off of it in a couple of years. So one of the things with the U.S. Uh, energy system, electricity in particular, this was built over a long period of time. It's a pretty mature sector. It's not something that we're putting in place for the first time, like when we built the railroad or when we built the highway system. It's something that we've already built, and it's not growing that fast now. So we've got the capital stock that we've built. To imagine tr transitioning it to a different set of power plants, um, you have to imagine building new ones that are different, but you also have to imagine replacing the ones we already have. So that means when you retire them, put them, you know, replace them with something different, or it means retiring them early if it's if it's really important to you for environmental purposes to retire them early. But even so, this takes years, potentially decades, to turn over this uh, equipment stock that we have in the energy sector. I think that a clean energy future is possible because we don't have another choice. We have to go clean with our energy. Uh, if we don't want to completely destroy this planet. My, when I think about clean energy being possible, it's like, I'm trying to think, can human nature change? It seems hopeless when you look at the magnitude of energy use, the possibility of horrible reactions from climate change over the long term. We face crises in life, think of World War II and they were coming on top of the Great Depression. The world has dealt with these things before. What it takes is a will to begin. And in the United States, we haven't had that will yet, and for all kinds of reasons, it's time for us to get serious about this serious problem.